Hello and welcome along to another managerial special from the Honest Football Podcast. Another week, another managerial change in the EFL. And myself, Craig and Charlie are here to discuss it. Or in fact, I'm here to ask the questions and let these two give their opinions, controversially or not. So today we are talking about Shrewsbury Town. So if you're new along and you've never seen the podcast before, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below. Check the eye above for all the content. There is lots of fun to be had over here. But Shrewsbury Town have sacked Sam Ricketts just a couple of days ago, and very quickly, a new man is in. That man is Steve Cottrell, who we'll talk about a bit later on, after a break from management. But let's start, as we always do, boys, by reflecting on the manager who's departing. So Sam Ricketts leaves the club just a week and a half shy of his two-year anniversary at the club. And although he'd done well in previous season, it's probably not been the best start to this year. No home win, three points at home, second bottom of the league with the least wins in the league, just the one on the road. Craig, it can't really be a surprise after this many games. No, let's let's be honest. Obviously, Shrews have done well. I, I probably, obviously, none of us tipped for them to go up or to get relegated. But yeah, it's not the best of starts at all. When you, you they've got good players, they they yeah. brought in some good players. Obviously, Leon Clark is probably the most experienced one out of them. Obviously, got promotion to Sheffield United. Uh, Charlie Daniels, obviously with Bournemouth, yeah. very good, very good players. But it just hasn't worked. I don't know if it's a, an aging squad, I don't know, but. Yeah, he just haven't got going for Sam Ricketts this season. And Charlie, on that subject, I mean, they're not much better away from home. They've only won the one game. But the big problem seems to be that they're shipping goals. They've let in 21 already. They've not scored a huge amount. And when, I mean, Craig's mentioned a couple of the boys that come in. You've got Mark Pugh, who is also well-known at Bournemouth. There's some really good players that have come into that squad. And none of us had them to go down, which suggests it's a surprise they're down there, particularly when you get to this sort of 12, 13, 14 game mark you start to think, is it a bit too late to call it a poor start? Yeah, and I think they haven't kept the clean sheet at home, and I think they've only kept one clean sheet away. Yeah. You can have all of the players at your disposal. I, I don't know. I mean, it's a big leap from Wrexham to Shrewsbury, and I mean that in the sense of going from the National League, where I believe he hadn't even done a full season at Wrexham, correct me if I'm wrong, to then go from that to League One side. And let's be honest, and this is not like, I'm not doing a teams-like sort of statement, but Shrewsbury wouldn't be one of the bigger hitters in League One. You've got to face the facts in terms of club size and financial applications and stuff like that. So it was always going to be a tough job. And I think, to be honest, you can get in the sort of players that, you, you, you know, that he's got in. But if you're not that experienced manager and maybe someone who's been around a little bit longer in that environment of, of being a League One manager, you can have all that disposable. If you can't get them to jail, you can't get them to, to work together, which is clearly what's happening. He's not got poor players, but to be scoring as few as they have and conceding as many as they have, it has to be. And I don't like blaming managers, but it has to be something that he's doing because you can't have the players that you've just listed, the pair of you, and be doing as poorly as they are if there wasn't something else going on. Yeah, and I mean, looking at, obviously, they had a, a magical FA Cup run against Liverpool a cup just a year or so ago. We've talked about that before. I mean, what we want to, to really look at here is how it's gone so suddenly wrong at Shrewsbury because they've got the joint third worst defensive record in the league, joint fourth worst, sorry, so far this season. They're only one point above Wigan at the bottom of the table, and we've talked a lot about the disarray they're in. Surely for any new manager coming in, we'll talk about Steve Cottrell in a minute, Craig, Sorting out the defence has got to be the first. Building a foundation, we say it so often, it's got to be the case here, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. I think if you, uh, if you join a side that's obviously leaking goals and near the bottom table, that's, that's, that's got to be the first thing you want to do. Obviously, yes, you want to win games, but you've got to stop the goals going in as well. Yeah, you've got to obviously build in that and then obviously work your way forward. They've got good, I said, they've got good quality players in this squad, so I'm surprised they actually started terribly. I think it looks like Sean Wally, obviously former Luton player, obviously he's just coming back into... Uh, Full fitness and uh, Jason Cummins as well. Yeah. Obviously, he's joint top goal scorer with Shadow Tracy on three goals. So it's very worrying. Obviously, yes, they need to obviously start scoring again. But obviously, yeah, as you said, stop leaking goals. But yeah, you've got to build on the foundations and go from there, really. I was just going to say, after Oxford, they've got Akron, and Stanley, Charlton, Lincoln, Hull, Sunderland, Doncaster, and then Wigan. And really, up until, and Wigan's on Boxing Day. So it's not really the greatest run of fixtures that you'd want, given the sort of season they've had so far. So, I mean... Well, the, we, we say this about every manager appointment, it's, obviously it's going to take time, but obviously with the way the league season started, obviously later because of the pandemic, it's hard to actually get yourself on the training ground and actually build on things. It's just, it's repetitive. So it's, it's very hard to actually build on what you want to achieve in the squad. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you boys, to be honest. I think the, the biggest thing to mention, I mean, Craig touched on it there, Sean Wally's double century for appearances celebration went well, didn't it? With Sam Ricketts then being out the club the next day. But talking about Steve Cottrell, we'll move on to the new man. We'll talk about the fan reaction in a minute, which has been largely negative, I have to say, from the, from the loud minority that we often see on social media. 
But the biggest bizarre thing for me, Craig, from this, we talked about it the opposite with Tranmere last week about a, a short term deal, thinking about the the forward view for the for the future with financial insecurity. He's been given a three and a half year deal. Now he's a man who's out of management for a couple of years. Had one short stint at Birmingham, obviously assisted Harry Redknapp for a while, but it's his first real long term managerial job for four and a half years. It's a very bold move from Shrewsbury. Yeah, I, I think in today's footballing world, if a manager gets a three and a half year deal, is you've got to at least give him at least two and a half. To be honest, it's a bold statement to actually give him a three and a half year contract, in my opinion, yeah. because we all know managerial game. They clearly have faith in him. It's always a manager that's always on like the odds to get yeah. manager around the football league. He probably whoever gets the next sack in, he probably links that as well. But obviously, yeah, it's 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 the experience of. They brought in obviously Sam Ricketts was very new to managerial role. Obviously, he'd done very well with Wrexham, even though, as Charlie did say, it was it was not barely a season, but it won half his league games. They trusted Sam Ricketts. It, it, it started very well, but obviously, in, in the end, it hasn't. But yeah, they wanted an experienced manager just to get him over the uh, relegation zone, which what we've seen from other managerial appointments this season is, is, is the way to go at the moment. Yeah, it seems to be the trend playing safe. And Charlie. I say that with Steve Cottrell. He, of course, we talked about this with Keith Hill. It's very easy to only remember the last job. If you go back to his stint at Bristol City, five years ago, he was winning League One with Bristol City. When we go back even further than that, he won League Two with Notts County 2010. He's been involved in five EFL promotions. He's won the EFL Trophy. He's won three EFL Manager of the Year awards as well, by the way. Although the reaction's negative, and I can sort of understand it based on recent years, and he has had a break from the game, which we'll talk about, there is a lot of experience and quality there, unlocked or locked, whichever way you look at it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here to do all talk sporty stuff. I'm slightly miffed by the negative reaction. You're talking about a manager who's nearly had 700 games. You're, you know, shows we're second from bottom in a league that shouldn't be second from bottom from, with a squad that they shouldn't be second from bottom from. I just can't see the negative reaction when you're talking about a man who has experience. And it's not just like, what I'm saying is it's not like Harry Redknapp's come down from the Premier League to manage him. You're talking about a man who knows and has probably done his best work in League One and League Two. Won loads of manager at a month awards, as you know, on Adam to what you said there. I don't see what the negatives are to him, other than the fact that there might be a slightly more negative style of play. But I don't even know if you can level that. I mean, he won the EFL trophy as well. And maybe that's what he needs a bit of time. You look at his more successful periods, it's when he's had three, four years, you know, at Cheltenham when he first started. All right, take, take out Notts County because that was more of a, a sort of short term thing. But Bristol City had four or five years there. So for me, I think it's probably quite an astute appointment, actually. I, I would be, as an objective person, not a Shrewsbury fan, I'd be quite pleased with him coming into the club. I don't really see that many negatives him taking over he's got a good squad he's a good manager he's experienced basically the opposite of Sam Ricketts and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way but having a young inexperienced manager hasn't led to them sort of being where they probably should be in the league so for me I can sort of see it as quite a stupid clever appointment do the opposite of what you've been doing I think what we've noticed of every managerial appointment or it's it's always going to be negative until they actually start doing all right for them but I, I can't remember a the manager of one like everyone was absolutely buzzing for. I completely agree with that. I mean, I was a bit concerned by the, the scale of the negativity towards it because we'll get to it in our conclusion, but I'm kind of on Charlie's side of the fence here that it's quite an astute appointment. We'll wait and see if the proof's in the pudding. But Craig, I guess moving forward, you've sort of led to something we talked about. He starts with four home games in a row. It looks like for either his first or second league game, he's going to have fans back in the stadium as well. Up to 2,000 allowed at Shrewsbury. So what sort of a difference, if any, do you think that's going to make before we decide what's going to happen for the season? To, to be honest, I think any fans coming back in the football stadium is, is an absolute positive. Yeah, obviously you want fans want to get behind the manager. I think obviously having a, a crowd that does generate people confidence, boost even to players, obviously hearing a noise. When it's silent, it's so much harder. If you're not used to it compared to like, obviously like non-league grassroots work stuff. But when you're used to fans chanting, Hearing songs, it does give you like mentally a bit of a boost. So yeah. I think that's a, 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 I think not just for Shrewsbury, but for everyone in football that that home team that are having fans come December is a massive boost. So I think that would be a good thing. They're not going to get on the players back. I can't see that happening straight away. No, I completely agree. And Charlie, I mean, the final one before we talk about what we expect from Shrewsbury for the rest of this season is let's look at the positives for the club. In theory, the first four league games, he can get through to a, a cup quarter final in the EFL Trophy. He can get through to the FA Cup third round and draw a Premier League team by Monday night. 
And if he wins the first two league games, they could be out of the relegation zone. And suddenly, he could be a hero and a miracle maker. So it's not all doom and gloom, is it? No, I mean, the next two league games are quite tough. I would more be looking at if he can get a result against maybe a Lincoln or a Wigan, which I know is a bit later on. But this is where I think it's, it's hard, you know, supporting a, a, a team who's struggling. But you, with this run of fixtures, you have a bit of patience. So on the cup side of it, yeah, I think that's fantastic. But I think as a Shrewsbury fan, you'd probably take that as a bonus. If what happens then maybe against a team when they play like Wigan or something like that, that's when you've got to start sort of thinking, where are we going to go from here? So that's leading on nicely to our final question, boys. And Craig mentioned it earlier again. For the first time in one of these managerial specials this year, I think, apart from Derby, perhaps, none of us predicted the side to go up and none of us predicted the side to go down or be in the playoffs or anything like that. So with the side sitting in 23rd, albeit just four points from safety, Craig Savage, where are they going to be at the end of the season? Will they be safe, as we predicted? And will Steve Cottrell be the right man for the job? I don't know. It's, I think, I, do you know, I, gee, yeah, no, I think that'd be fine. I really do. Um, he's got enough experience to get him out of a hole. The thing is, they've just got to get that win. I think it's more confidence. But they haven't won one league game all season. So I think it's literally just get that win out of the way and then build, build from it. And I think he's quite good at doing that. So I think he'll survive probably 18, I'll say. Oh, well, they'll, they'll certainly take survival this season and it's what oh, they build for the future. I think, I, I think any team that's in the bottom three or four in any league will take survival. So, unless you're actually doomed. So, yeah, yeah, I think they'll, they'll be fine. And, Charlie, I guess the same for you. Obviously, he starts with the home games. If he ends the hoodoo, do you agree with Craig? Could they go on a run and be safe? Oh, yeah, I think they'll be safe. I think... I just, you know, in terms of even like you're saying, him been out of the game for a little while. He had 18 months out before he went to Bristol City and, you know, did wonders there. So... I think they'll be safe. I think they'll be a comfortable mid-table. I, I think the playoffs will be too much of an ask. But, you know, League One's a tight league. So, it, I'm not saying it's impossible. I don't think they'll get there. But I can't see why I can't finish in the top 10. You know, a 10th position or something like that. Genuinely, he's got he, there's such a good squad there. And could he unlock that? So, comfortable mid-table, if not slightly pushing into the top half. I think they've got, he's got more than enough time to do that. And he's got more than enough experience and with a good squad. So, yeah, why not? And as is fairly the case, I will finish by not sitting on the fence and giving you my opinion. And I'm sort of in between the two of you. I mean, Craig's gone about 18th, Charlie's gone 10th. I'd say they'd probably be the top end of the bottom half. I'd be surprised if they weren't sort of between 13th to 16th, that sort of range. They're only eight points off 12th, which is Wimbledon, who lots of people had to be down there this season. So I can, I can clearly see them staying up. I don't think there's any danger at all. And the only message I would send to Shrewsbury fans is, Please cheer up. It's not a bad appointment. I know that it's so easy to judge people on their last job. We've said it in loads of episodes. And quite often, we've been proven right in these ones. I know our championship predictions are useless, but our managerial ones aren't that bad. So give him the faith, give him the, the support, and Shrewsbury will be safe and sound this season and probably build quite nicely in the future. But that's it for this episode. Thank you to Craig and Charlie for joining me as always. I'm sure we'll have another managerial special next week. There's three more games to come and FA Cup ties as well. If you did enjoy this one, please put a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for regular content from the podcast, including match day predictions from the championship, interviews with professional footballers, and more managerial specials just like this one from Charlie's Music Room. But thank you very much for watching. You can follow us over on Twitter at HonestFootball3, and I'll see you next time.